I can't believe it. John Hathaway, is he there? Is it really him? There yeah. he is. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much for having me on tonight. John, it's, how are uh, you? Great to chat. It's, I'm very well, thank you very much. It was really cool. I caught well. the end of uh, Eddie's chat as well. Obviously, I've been a big fan of Eddie as well for a while. Obviously, the Chandler fights were just uh, absolutely epic. And yeah, I, hopefully he can get what he deserves and, and get a third one in. Well, I have to say, I am delighted to see you, see that smile, hear that voice. It has been a long time, my friend. It has really been a long time. And this news kind of came out of nowhere. You know, a couple of days ago, a reporter, I believe it was Aaron Bronsetter, who tweeted that these fighters are still being tested by USADA. And I saw your name on there and I was like, golly, John Hathaway, what happened to him? And then a couple of days later, we find out that you're coming back and you have signed with Octagon MMA. And so could I ask you... And take as much time as you want. Where have you been, John? Why have we not seen you since 2014? Well, I guess obviously uh, I had like ulcerative colitis, which is like a kind of form of Crohn's in like the lower bowel, and kind of I think I end up having to pull out. I think it was about three, maybe four fights I end up pulling out of, and I kind of on that last one, which was the the Gunnar Nelson one, which I believe was a couple of months after the the loss to Kim. I kind of were like, I can't keep basically, well, I thought to myself, I can't keep doing this and pulling out for a couple of weeks' notice on guys. It's not really fair. And I was like, I basically took a backward step to kind of, I guess, go through the process of, of trying to fix myself or even cure myself in this, uh, this respect. How much so, pain um, were you in yeah. at that time? Um, I mean, it's, it's always massively discomfort. Any kind of, a, I don't know if you had any stomach issues, but any kind of like bowel issues or anything, it's just a general, general discomfort. Do you know what I mean? It's not as painful as getting a cut or getting shot or stabbed or anything like right. that. But it's a general just low-level discomfort the whole time. Obviously, when it flares up even worse, it kind of gets more uncomfortable and just very hard to kind of train to a good level, really. And, and, were, and you're constantly kind of fatigued on it. And were you battling this? Like, were you was this always, you know, like maybe you were at a three, a four, and then it would flare up even when you were in your prime in the UFC? Yeah, so especially towards the end. So I think probably... My first four fights in the UFC, I didn't have it. And then from then onwards, I would say after the pile fight is when I, I got it. So uh, I'd had, obviously, um, uh, Tom Egan fight, Rick Story, Diego, pile. And then after that, I think I was coming up to match against Matt Brown, actually. And that was when I first kind of got diagnosed with this and, and started having a lot of troubles with it. And then, yeah, depending, some fights I managed to kind of get through camp and, and not have any troubles. Some fights I'd be on a... A medication called prendiserone, which is kind of like a it's like an anti-inflammatory steroid, which you have to be on, which kind of like doesn't do wonders for your body. It kind of just makes a uh, other problems, but again, makes it anti-inflammation, so it kind of brings down the uh, symptoms of of UC or Crohn's. And you had to have multiple surgeries. Uh, yeah, so basically, it was I guess three surgeries for for one thing. So the first surgery is to remove the large bowel, so wow. it ends up working out about two kilos or two and a half kilos of, of kind of bowel. Wow. The second surgery, so you get a stoma from that, which is basically what you, your butthole kind of coming out of your uh, abdomen and you'll have a, a stoma bag. So you'll be pulling in a bag. And then from there, I had a, a J pouch made. So I believe it was about four months after, about four or five months after they build the J pouch, which is basically the end of your small bowel. They build a pouch sits like kind of a on your bum hole and then you'll still have a stoma because they they let that settle for this about four horrible. to six weeks I, it's, it's, I mean it's, it's more crazy what they, they can yeah. do with the human body now it's just you know amazing I mean? like that you're talking about process. this yeah it's like madness. so chalantly it's unbelievable it sounds like a, a nightmare well i mean <laughs> there was one nightmare part of it where uh basically on my first surgery i had my surgery and um it was like this odd thing where like i had a um Epidurin, you know what, what pregnant women have. Yeah, so I couldn't yeah. feel anything oh, while I had no. it. And I, I, I felt amazing after the surgery. I was like, obviously, almost like it's a weird thing because you have like, say, two and a half kilos of like almost necrotic bad flesh taken out. So I like instantly was like, oh, I feel so much better now. Right. And then I still had the epidural in. And I was like, oh, they no. were like, want you to eat and drink. So I was eating and drinking. It was all fine. They took the epidural and basically my body realized that something catastrophic had happened to it. Oh, no. So my bowel like shut, shut down. But it shut down with like loads of stuff in it, basically. So like, holy, oh. just froze up. Nothing was passing. Anything I drank would basically like fill up and then just come back out. Oh my god! And it's a weird thing of like any kind of nauseous medication I was on, like didn't do anything. And it was just before Christmas, and it was this really odd process where like 
everyone in the uh, I managed to get it done privately as well, which is, is a plus because I was waiting on the NHS to do it, and I think I missed the first week because some other more important things came in. So I managed to get private after that. But I was walking around this private hospital, and it was almost like the scene um, at the beginning of Twenty Eight Days Later, where basically everyone had gone home for Christmas. Oh. There's like just me and like my nightgown with like a um, little. Um, IV in me. Oh, I was just gosh. like wandering around because they're like, they tell you to get up and try basically walk around as much as you can to kind of like stimulate your bowel or, or just get your body moving. So I was like hobbling around this uh, place, like half of it was shut off because it's Christmas time, no one's in. So it's just like this really eerie kind of a uh, odd occasion. But regardless, it took, I think, about three, four days of that. And then I, I got past that, body started working again. And then uh, I was home for Christmas. So it wasn't oh. so bad. Were you depressed? I mean, that's that's a depressing scene that you just described there. Here at one point, you're fighting at the O2. You're this massive prospect, world-renowned, uh, 17 and 2 in the UFC. Everyone's talking about you as a yeah. future champion, uh, you know, like this well-rounded fighter coming out of a great... Like, did you feel depressed? Did you feel down? And if so, how did you get over that? Uh, I guess I never felt truly down. I mean, I got hiccups one of the days when I had it, and that was super grim. And my wife... Will, well, she was my wife at that time. Well, she was my wife. Wife was there. She was just basically laughing at me as I'm hiccuping and being in a, a bit of uncomfortableness. But I said, it was right. I said, I always knew what I wanted to do. I always knew from the, the moment I, I met the, the surgeon, I was like, I'm going to go back internal, like build the J pouch. So I would not have basically an external kind of um, bag. So I'll go back internal so I can basically get back to doing some kind of competition. Like whether, even if it wasn't going to be, say, MMA, whether it just be wrestling or grappling or, or some boxing, like I just wanted to get back to doing something. So I always had that kind of motivation to kind of, I guess, keep going and keep cracking on with it. Wow. How how long were you away from the gym? Like, you know, when you're going through all of this, you can't train at all. So, you know, like, did you go years without training? Uh, probably not years. Again, I was always trying to pop up to shoot as much as I could. Like, this is before the surgeries. So, um, I kind of like once I got past the initial surgeries that I went back up to shoot. Obviously, we had a probably a couple of weeks where they were like, oh, you know, once I was, I was back to healthiness, they were like, oh, we don't really want you taking any body shots or anything, which is understandable. Yeah. But we're, we're kind of way past that now that like body's fine. You can get hit, kicked, everything. It's just like a normal body or what anyone else wow. would kind of have, you know? That is... Yeah, I mean, before that, when I was just getting through all the, all the different medications, like I was trying to get off as much like I guess I could without my body kind of like collapsing on me again sure. and, and getting a flare up. Uh, did you keep in touch, like, you know, like the sport? Like, did you keep tabs on the sport? Did you still watch the sport? Did you still watch the UFC? Or was that difficult for you because it had kind of been taken away from you? I think for the probably the first year or two, it was quite difficult for me. But after that, I basically, I just fell back in love with it. I think I started teaching again a bit more. and just it couldn't, couldn't really stay away from it. It's the same a little bit like with... It's not just a MMA for me. Like, just the whole combat sport scene is just so cool at the moment. Right. It's so nice to follow. Like, with the ADCCs recently, have just been an amazing thing to watch as well. So, um, yeah, just combat sports in general is just, just on a whole new high, and it's just doing amazing. Obviously, the boxing is always really good as well. So, yeah, it's been really enjoyable. Uh, was there any doctor, any professional that told you, yeah, like, you'll get better and we'll fix you, but you'll never fight again. Like, we do not advise this. Was was that ever said to you at any point? No, it was actually never said to me. The surgeon wow. never said that. I mean, one of the things what he, he kind of did say, I guess, was like, he said about going back internal. He was like, most people prefer having the bag because it's just so much easier than like, I guess, going to the toilet naturally. Right. So, and I, I definitely felt that when I first started going, I guess, back again through my bum hole rather than just putting in a bag and draining it. Like oh, it, it, becomes, it becomes so much more mature and it's not one of the things again no one should ever really get to that point where they realize like oh man like, yeah, you have to make that is, decision just doing it like this way it's just like such a pain in the backside than, like just drain a bag it's literally it's, it's, uh, it's no problem but yeah I guess you know again I knew it was, it was not going to hold me back so I was, I was kind of even when that was uh, and it was annoying going back to being I guess normal but you're just like I wanted to do it so much. It didn't bother me. So here's the thing. Are, are you still... Because I saw that thing about USADA. Like, were they really testing you during all of this? Yeah, so they were, they were still testing me at least three, three to four times a year. Come on, really? So for the last, I guess, eight, eight or nine years. I mean, all the guys who come and test me are always super nice. 
nice people. So I, I don't mind ever chatting to them. I mean, I guess the only annoying thing was for large parts of it, I was on different medications before I had the went yeah. down the surgery option. I was on like some just random wacky like immune suppressant medication or biological immune suppressant medication. It was just that weird thing of like, I made sure, I mean, after the first couple, I made sure I had it on my phone written down rather than being like, oh, I'm on these medications and sure. trying to find like what ones I'm actually on or or whatnot. Because again, they'd always catch me like at the gym when I'm teaching or sometimes first thing in the morning. So, you know, you wouldn't be necessarily have these things on hand being like, oh, these are the dozen medications I'm on to like try fix my body up. But what's the point of testing you if you were nowhere near coming back? I have no idea. Okay, that. <laughs> No idea, really. I mean, it, the, the good thing about it, I guess, in in, in the hindsight thing that I'm, I'm back to being into, it's like, it's, I've been clean for like eight years or seven years. So it's, it's not yeah. like I have to have any, I guess, set in period where they're like, oh, we've got to make sure we test you a lot for the next six months and make sure you've kind of not been taking anything. Now, why, why eight years? Like, you're coming back October 15th and, I'm, and I want to talk to you about Octagon, but were you told at some point, like, okay, you are officially cleared to fight again, and this was at some certain, like, why are you deciding to come back now, essentially, and not six months ago or four months ago? I guess to, to a certain, certain point, we started trying to get back probably beginning of this year almost. And wow. we were speaking to UFC, but I think the UFC were in the point, and again, I'll say as well, off the top of my head, UFC has been pretty good at like, let me take this time off and kind of work out, you know, get to the bottom of my body problem, basically, and end up having the surgery to fix yeah. it rather than all the medication I said. But they were at the point, I think, at the beginning of this year of like, they didn't really know what to do with me. They were like, they didn't just want to chuck me back in with that long out just in case, like, you know, I, I don't have any ability left in me. One, you know, again, confident that I have the ability just because I've been training again with, with all the guys that shoot in some other places. So I'm, I'm confident that I'm back to almost the level where I was at, or at least a very high level. But um, yeah, they didn't know what to do with me. So they they kind of asked me to, I guess, go have a tune-up fight somewhere to be able to compete somewhere else. It took a little while to actually get a, an organization that would kind of accept me almost on like a limited contract uh, thing or a one-fight contract. Obviously, I'm, I'm blessed in that we managed to speak to Octagon and we managed to get that kind of sorted with them. So I've managed to get that secured in. And then, um, yeah, I'll just basically back on with that. And it, obviously, it's taken till now, till October, wow. to kind of organize that and, and get that all sorted out. So in the in the press release where Octagon announced that you're returning again, it's October 15th in Frankfurt, Germany, and Octagon's been doing amazing things. They're really one of the up-and-coming promotions in Europe, massive crowds all over Europe. It said multi-fight deal that you signed with them. Yeah. So how yeah, I've got a multi-fight deal. I said, like, if UFC may not want me back, if they want me back at some point, we will kind of okay. start negotiations and, uh, and organize that. But yeah, I've got a four-fight deal with Octagon. As you've said, like, I'm super happy with it. When you look at the... So when you look at that October card, like there's so much good European talent in there and they've all got such great records as well now. So it really is going to be a nice, I guess, competitive show. There's a bunch of good people on it. Now, this is a crazy question to ask someone who's been out for eight years, but why <laughs> is the fight like so soon? Like it was just announced and you're fighting October 15th. Have you known about it for a while? Because it seems like a really quick, you know, turnaround from the announcement to the actual fight happening. Yeah, again, I probably knew maybe a couple weeks out and we were kind of just uh, negotiating kind of, I guess, opponents and trying to finalize that kind of contract on payment and how many fights were there. Because originally, again, we were just trying to, I guess, get a one-fight contract deal just in case UFC wanted it back. But we were fine taking like that 4 5 one Again, we've been speaking to the UFC and they were fine with this. So it was just taking, I guess, a couple... <laughs> A couple extra weeks to kind of okay. cross the T's and dot, dot the I's, you know? Uh, I saw in the press release, and I asked them, but I didn't hear back. Maybe they wrote me while we're on the air. In the press release, it says versus TBA, you versus the dreaded TBA. Do you have an opponent yet? Uh, no, it's meant to be hopefully confirmed tonight for, for the opponent. Obviously, yeah, there was, they got a bunch of good names in the world weight division, so just kind of trying to find one which wants the fight with me and... Uh, getting organized on, on, again, a couple of weeks' notice as well. Okay. So you will be fighting as as a welterweight again? Yes. Okay. And have you, you know, have you kept, uh, like, the UK MMA scene, I'm sure you don't need to hear it from me, is incredible now, right? I mean, there's a champion, uh, uh, the shows are incredible, the amount of talent, 
from, you know, from Leon all the way down, Tom Aspinall was doing, isn't this an, like when you were fighting eight years ago, I remember going to uh, UFC 120 at the O2 and there, you know, there's you, there's Bisping, there's, but it wasn't this type of talent. It was nowhere near this type of talent. Yeah. Um, what do you make of what has become of the UK MMA scene? And it's not just like, oh, a bunch of strikers. Everyone's well-rounded, every, you know, from jujitsu to wrestling. This, this type of evolution in the last 10 years, what do you make of it? I, again, it's super cool. Like, the best thing is uh, it's not all just a bunch of boxes which have turned to MMA. Everyone's got skills in absolutely every every department. And the cool thing is it's, it's not just one weight division. Obviously, you've got Leon, which is amazing, and uh, I was so happy for him to win that. I actually made sure I stayed up for that one and kind of watched that one live, which is, uh, it's been a while since they did it. I normally kind uh -huh. of catch up on Sunday mornings for him, but I, I wanted to be up for that one. But yeah, you got heavyweights, you got all the way, like, there's a good UK guy in every weight division. In fact, there's, there's more than one. There's always a couple. And there's always a couple kind of vying to get into, say, the bigger promotions like UFC and Bellator. So, yeah, it's, it's a great time for UK MMA, but just MMA is a general thing. But the general level of everyone's just got higher as like an all-round thing rather than I said, even though I wasn't like super early days, I was still on the point where people were predominantly like A-style a lot of the time. So, yeah, it's, it's golden age of, uh, of mixed martial arts. Or as I said, as I said earlier, just combat sports in general. Right. And it's very rare to see someone come back in combat sports after an eight-year hiatus and, and the kind of health issues that you have had to overcome. Ultimately, why is this important to you? Why why do you want to come back? Uh, again, it's something I've always loved to do. Ever since I was, say, 15 years old, I first watched my first UFC and then started watching, say, like The Prides and all the other shows. It's just like, which uh, I love competing and I love competing in combat sports. Uh, for me, again, I guess I definitely didn't finish my combat. If, the, if the, what I finished was the end of my combat career, I definitely didn't finish it in the way I wanted it to finish. Right. And definitely was kind of felt like a little bit taken away from me. And I said, I'm just lucky that I've managed to bring this around and get back to a point where I kind of can compete and do stuff again. Uh, how much did it bother you that the last fight was was the loss to Kim? Like that it wasn't some great win. You had so many more wins and losses, 17 and two, an unbelievable run. Right. By any stretch, but that it was that one. Like that was the the most recent one on the record. Did that bother you? Did that sit? You know, oh yeah, like, massively yeah? so. Yeah, definitely, definitely sits bad again. Even if I'd managed to say get the the gunner fight, I would have been a would have been a good fight, kind of good competitive different style. Obviously, losing the Kim in that way is a a great show for him, but obviously a, a bad show for me. I think what was more annoying is watching his next fight straight after me of Tyron Woodley, and like almost like when I'm wondering like oh, I hope he does well just because it, it almost makes me seem yeah, better yeah, yeah. spun straight away from the elbow and just got clipped by Woodley straight away and you're like oh like, <laughs> wait like three rounds to throw it on me yet you did it like the first thing as soon as you get in there you're like damn it again <laughs> but then he was always a wicked guy so obviously he won but um, it was, he was a great guy to compete against he had some great fights in UFC as well and, 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 you know, as you mentioned, a lot of promotions now are doing a lot of big things in Europe, but, you know, uh, PFL is coming there doing shows, Bellator just right. had a, a show in Dublin and they've gone to the UK. You're still a UFC fighter, like in the sense that you can't, if, if Bellator or PFL or one of these guys want to grab you, you can't do that. Like UFC is giving you permission to fight with Octagon, but you couldn't go from Octagon to one of these other guys. I think basically after these next couple of fights, we'll, we'll basically figure out whether the UFC contracts terminate or whether they're going to want to pick it back up again. I guess it's on freeze at the moment, but as you said, there's, I love UFC. They've done some great things for me and great things at MMA, but there's some great organizations out there as well. Obviously, it was, it was enjoyable to see that PFL finally came over as well. Had their, I think they had back to back weekends, I believe, yeah. as well, once in Cardiff and then yeah. somewhere else. So it was just cool. Yeah, it was London, wasn't it? It was Cardiff yeah. and London. But yeah, I said, MMA is just on a cool boom at the moment. There's some great shows out there. People are doing some great things. And uh, just curious, um, those surgeries, you mentioned private, I'm sure rather pricey. Yeah. Did UFC help you with that? Uh, no, I mean, got lucky that we managed to get a um, kind of like a business, basically insurance for it. So okay. like for a family business, what, what my family runs. So I managed to get on the books for that and just, just get it done privately in the UK. Okay. It was a bit of like I said, it was that odd thing of like I waited, I think it was one or two weeks where I missed my spot for the NHS. And we were just like, Do you know We'll just jump on this if we can get it. It worked out. The insurance company were happy to take it. So, and no concerns whatsoever about anything. You know, going in there to fight, someone kicking you, punching you, nothing at all. No, no it's nothing. I I don't kind of I yeah. guess, encounter now weekly. <laughs> so, did it take a while? With uh, 
Did it take you a while for your uh, brain to get over that? No, no, not so much to get here now. It took me a while to kind of just get my my body back to strength. As I right. said, like I kind of did shrink down during the surgeries where I just had like couldn't do anything really, had nothing left in me. Could like train moderately, but nothing too hard. And then again, not being able to eat properly for a while, just because my my stomach kind of couldn't really take the uh, the volume really or anything. So, right. and as far yeah, as I'm back to a, a normalish weight. And and as far as your diet is concerned, like, are there things that you just absolutely can have, must avoid? Pretty much, I can have anything. There's just slight consequences for some things. As a general rule, like large amounts of fiber don't do my body that great just because there is such a smaller track now to go through that it just goes through faster. Okay. Hot things, as much as I like hot things, they come out pretty much as hot as they go in. So that's not huh. necessarily always the best best thing. But I said I still like hot things. So again, it's that, that moderation of like, okay, I'll have this, but I'll, I'll probably suffer a little bit for it later, you know? Gosh, that is tough, man. And 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 but otherwise, like no flare-ups, no issues. When's the last time you had any kind no, of that, issue? I said the weird thing, I guess, with this this thing is uh I'm technically cured because wow. of the surgery. They've just removed the whole area which gets affected by this. And I said, like, since then I've had no problems with it. So obviously I kind of went through so many different ways to try and not have this because I said. I think obviously when you first get diagnosed with something like this, one of the first things they're like, oh, like, you know, you may have to have surgery if it keeps happening. Or I think the other thing they're like, obviously, you have to go into immune suppressants. And there were two things where I was like, I'm never going on immune suppressants and I'm, I'm never going to have surgery. I went for all the immune suppressants and I end up having surgery. But, oh, man. you know, I guess looking back at it now, I'm like, I, I was not that I wanted to do it early. I kind of got to the point where I had to do it. There was no like other way of uh, fixing it or, or sorting it out. So it was right. What about beef jerky? I see that uh, on on uh, Instagram, you, you make your own beef jerky. How does that sit with you? Am I right in that? Yeah, ab- absolutely fine. I said like pretty much all meat products. I mean, it's that weird thing of like different kind of people with different diets saying this is the diet, whether it's vegan, whether it's the carnivore diet, where like I said, I've, I've tried the majority of them. I guess slightly more towards the, I guess, meat or kind of products which don't have large amounts of fiber. Again, I like, I've always liked having salads and other stuff. I just got, can't have them as much as what I would say would used to, you know, so it's got to be careful more like my, my fiber intake. Right. Back on. I mean, I've always liked white bread. So there's nothing wrong with white bread. <laughs> yeah, that is true. It's the, uh, the old fashioned kind that we like as kids. Are you making your own beef jerky? Yeah. Make my own beef jerky. Wow. So again, just got like a little, a little dry box and stuff like that. Amazing. It's not so bad. You season it up, but you can't, again, you can season it up any, any way you want really. It's the good thing about jerky. And, uh, you're still training at London shoot fighters. Yeah, so I train at London Shoot Fires. I train at my uh, local boxing gym, which is uh, Hove and, uh, Brighton and Hove Amateur Boxing Club. Which again, uh, not that I train with him, but Chris Eubanks Jr. is in there as well. So he's got his fight coming up with Conor wow. Ben, which should be a really good, uh, a kind of, I guess, all British yeah. fight cast, which is going to be great. And again, like, uh, I guess I watched their, like, their old men fight as well Oh my God. when I was younger. Is so Chris- it really is like a massive yes. history kind of thing. Chris Senior, is he ever at the gym? I love that man. I've, I've actually met Chris Senior quite oh. a few times. He said, like, he's always super nice to me. Obviously, he's a... What a gentleman. It's eccentric or whatever. Yes. But yeah, it's just absolute gentleman. I mean, he was so different from every other boxer in that yes. time. It was just uh, just insane. But yeah, lovely fella. Met him a couple of times. And yeah, what a, what a fighter he was. And as far as, you know, there's a lot of new fans in, in MMA. I bet there's people watching this. I mean, it's crazy. So much has happened since you, you last fought. Right. There's probably people watching this right now who have never seen you fight, right? A lot of new fans, ESPN fans, Conor McGregor fans, all that stuff. Which, right. what if so? If if you could tell a fan watching this who has never had the pleasure of seeing you fight, and they're like, you know what? I want to learn more about this guy. I was talking about him, seventeen and two. What a re- what's the fight in the UFC that you're most proud of? That you would say, all right, you want to get a sense for who John Hathaway was back then and who he will be again. What's the fight that sticks out? Uh, for me, it's always the Rick Story fight. That guy was so tough. He was a, I mean, almost one of those awkward ones. A solid wrestler, not overly tall, so hard to get any shots on on him. Southpaw as well, so he's awkward and he threw bombs. You know, and uh, it was a it was a tough fight to kind of go head to head with him and kind of obviously eventually get get the win with him. But again, he had some great fights in UFC as well, and he he was a great competitor. It's crazy. You're mentioning all these names. The vast majority of these guys aren't fighting anymore. Rick Story, no, Mike, I, I, you know what I mean? It's weird. It is a very weird, weird thing. It is a super weird thing, but I have to say, 
it's really lovely to see you back. It's bringing me uh, back to a whole other time in the sport, in my career, and uh, you've always been a gentleman. And, and just to see you again, your smile, I mean, you've always been lovely to talk to. So when I saw this news, uh, I hit up Octagon right away. I was like, I'd love to talk to John. It's been so long, and uh, I really hope that this works out for you. I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be October 15th. Thank you, you can watch much. it on their website, Frankfurt, Germany. I hear they put on a fantastic show, and I love this home for you. So I'm so happy that you're in good health and good spirits. And and welcome back, John. And I wish you nothing but the best in a couple of weeks and beyond. I hope you get to fight for another 10 years. I hope you get to make up for all that lost time. I will do my best to do it as well. Thank you ever so much for having me on. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, the great John Hathaway. I mean, what a lovely guy. What an absolute legend.